Hi, Matthew here. I'm going to talk you through this Leaving Cert Maths question. It's challenging, but hopefully with my help, you'll be able to understand and answer the question. So let's get started. Question eight, which is a 50 mark question. Part A is on time, speed, and distance, as well as a bit of calculus. And then part B is on financial maths. So let's start with part A. And we're told that Jack is driving along a straight road towards traffic lights. When he saw that the light was turning amber, he braked and the car came to a complete stop just before the traffic lights. The velocity, which is given in meters per second to the car, after he applied the brakes is given by the formula V is equal to 42E to the power of minus one over three T minus 15, where T is the time after he applied the brakes. And this is measured in seconds. So question A part 1 is worth 5 marks and wants us to calculate the initial acceleration of the car. So a nice handy graphic that I like to use with questions like this in time, speed and distance with calculus is this. So if you want to go from distance to speed and velocity or from speed and velocity to acceleration, you differentiate the function. And then if you want to go from acceleration to speed or velocity or speed and velocity to distance, you integrate. This can be handy on a flashcard. So if you don't know it, I recommend writing it down and learning it off before the exam. So we're given the formula for the velocity. So we're given the velocity and we're trying to find the acceleration. So based on what I've written here on the screen, we're going to differentiate the formula for velocity and that will give us the acceleration. So again, the velocity is equal to 42 e to the power of minus one over three t minus 15. And now I'm going to differentiate with respect to t. So dv dt is going to be 42 e to the power of minus one over three t times by the derivative of the exponent in e. So the derivative with respect to t of minus one over three t is just minus one over three. And then the minus 15 will go to zero so we can leave that out. So then 42e to the power of minus 1 over 3t multiplied by minus 1 over 3 is minus 14, which means that dv to t is equal to minus 14e to the power of minus 1 over 3t. But remember, it's the initial acceleration that we're looking for, so that's at time t is equal to 0. So we're going to pop in 0 for t and work out what we get. That's going to be minus 14e to the power of minus 1 over 3 times by 0, which is just minus 14e to the power of 0. So that's minus 14 times by 1, which is obviously just minus 14. And that's our answer for question A, part 1. And don't forget the units there for full marks. So now we're going to have a look at A, part 2, and this is worth 10 marks. So now here we have to calculate the time taken to stop the car, giving our answer correct to two decimal places. So basically the car will be stopped when the function V is equal to 0. So we have to find T when V is equal to 0. So we're going to put our function for the velocity equal to 0 and then solve for T. So that's 42e to the power of minus 1 over 3t minus 15 equal to 0 and then I'm going to plus 15 on both sides to get 42e to the power of minus 1 over 3t is equal to 15 and now I'm going to divide by 42 on both sides to get e to the power of minus 1 over 3t is equal to 15 over 42 and now because the variable is in the exponent we're going to have to use logarithms to solve for the variable so if we look at page 21 in our formula and tables book this will help us and we're going to look at the third formula down in the middle column here so that's saying that log of some number x to the power of a constant q is equal to that number number q times by the log of the number x. So in our case, we have e to the power of minus one over three t. So now if I put in ln of e to the power of minus one over three t, by following this formula here, that's equal to minus one over three t times by ln of e. So now we're gonna pop this in for the left-hand side of our equation. So it's gonna be minus one over three t ln of e, but we have to also remember that we have to put an ln before the 15 over 42. So we're gonna put both of these equal to each other and then solve for t. So as I said, it's minus one over three t times by ln of e is equal to ln of 15 over 42. So now ln of e is just 1, so it's minus 1 over 3t by 1, which is obviously going to be minus 1 over 3t, and then we can work out what ln of 15 over 42 is by using our calculator. That's equal to minus 1.029619417. So now we're going to divide both sides by minus 1 over 3. So we're basically just going to divide this answer here by minus 1 over 3. So then we get t is equal to 3.08885852, and correct to two decimal places, that's t is equal to 3.09, and that's seconds. So that's our answer for question A, part two. And now we're gonna have a look at question A, part three, which is also worth 10 marks. So here we have to obtain an expression in terms of t for the displacement of the car t seconds after the brakes have been applied. Those of you familiar with physics will know that displacement is also the same as distance. So we're basically just trying to find an expression or function for the distance. Now remember, at the top of the page in question A, I showed you the diagram for how to go from distance to velocity or velocity to acceleration or also working backwards. So here we're working backwards, going from velocity to distance, which means we're going to integrate the function for the velocity, which is given by v. 
So it's the integral of 42 e to the power of minus 1 over 3 t minus 15 with respect to t. So let's have a look at page 26 of our formula tables book to find out how to integrate when we have an e, the exponential. So if you just have e to the power of x, that's just e to the power of x, or if you have e to the power of a constant times by x, then it's 1 over the constant times by e to the power of the constant times by x. So it's this formula here. So we're going to use this now to integrate 42 e to the power of minus 1 over 3 t. So that's going to be 42 e to the power of minus 1 over 3 t times by 1 over minus 1 over 3. And then the 15 is a constant, so it's going to be minus 15t. As for constants, you just add in the variable. And don't forget the plus c. So now 42e to the power of minus 1 over 3t multiplied by 1 over minus 1 over 3 will give us minus 126e to the power of minus 1 over 3t and then minus 15t plus c. So we're going to call this expression s, which represents the displacement or distance. So now we know at the start time is equal to 0 that the distance must also be equal to 0. So if we put t equal to 0 and s equal to 0, then we should be able to work out c. So it's going to be 0 is equal to minus 126e to the power of minus 1 over 3 times by 0, minus 15 times by 0 plus c. So e to the power of minus 1 over 3 times by 0 is just e to the power of 0. And then minus 15 by 0 is obviously just going to be 0. And then the c stays the same. So then e to the power of 0. So as I said before, anything to the power of 0 is 1. So then we get 0 is equal to minus 126 times by 1, which is obviously just going to be minus 126. And then minus 0 plus c, so just plus c. So now adding 126 to both sides, we get c is equal to 126. Therefore, our expression for the displacement s is equal to minus 126e to the power of minus 1 over 3t minus 15t plus 126. So that's our answer for a part 3 of the question. And now we're going to have a look at a part 4. So a part 4 wants us to calculate the breaking distance. And we have to give our answer correct to two decimal places. So we know that the time that it takes to stop the car is equal to 3.09. So we have to find the distance that the car travels in 3.09 seconds. So basically we have to find s when t is equal to 3.09. So that's going to be s is equal to minus 126e to the power of minus 1 over 3 times by 3.09, minus 15 by 3.09 plus 126. So now we can pop this into our calculator to work it out. So then we get s is equal to 34.667.12297. And correct to two decimal places, that's 34.67. So then s is equal to 34.67 meters. And that's the answer for a part four. And now we're going to move on to part b of the question, which is the final and that's part of the question. So we're told that Jack wants to buy a new car and he finds a suitable model on sale for €17,500. He saved €3,500 and he has to take out a loan for the remaining €14,000. So he agrees a four-year loan at an APR of 7.5%, that's the annual percentage rate, and he has to pay this back in equal monthly repayments at the end of each month. So now we have to calculate the monthly rate that is equivalent to an annual percentage rate of 7.5% and then hence or otherwise find the monthly repayment that Jack has to make on the four-year loan. Own. We have to give our answer correct to the nearest cent. So basically what I'm going to do here is I'm going to use the formula here for compound interest and you can find this in the formula and tables book. So it's on page 30 and it's the very first formula in the page. So this is the formula we use when we're compounding interest. So f is the final value of the amount and the p is the amount that we invested at the start with i being the interest rate as a decimal and then t is the time. So we're going to use this now to find out the monthly rate of an APR of 7.5%. So now we say that if one euro was invested then p would be equal to one and at a 7.5% 5% APR, f it be equal to 1.075. We don't know what i is, so that's the variable, so we're going to leave that as 1 plus i. And then t is going to be 12, as there's 12 months obviously in a year. So now i is in terms of months, not years, so that's why we have 12. And now I'm going to want to get rid of the 12 in the exponent. So to do that, I'm going to put 1.075 to the power of 1 over 12, and that's equal to 1 plus i. So now let's work out what 1.075 to the power of 1 over 12 is. We get 1.00604419 and that's equal to 1 plus i. So now minusing 1 from both sides, I get 0.00604419 is equal to i. So that's my interest rate. And now I have to work out his monthly repayments. So to do that, I'm going to use the amortization formula, which is on the very next page of the formula and tables book. And it's the very first formula on the page. So we use this formula for mortgages and loans, where a is the repayment amount. I know it says annual there, but it can also be monthly and then p is the principal invested at the start and i is still the interest rate and t is the time so we're going to pop in p i and t and work out our value for a so p is going to be the loan amount which is obviously going to be fourteen thousand. the interest rate i is going to be the 0 0.00604419 and then t is going to be 12 by 4 as there's four years and obviously 12 months per year which is obviously going to be 48 
So now we're going to pop this into our formula and then solve for a. So then a is equal to 14,000 times by 0.00604419 times by 1 plus that, which is going to be 1.00604419 to the power of 48. And all of that over 1.00604419 to the power of 48 again. And we're going to minus 1 from that answer. So let's pop this into our calculator now and see what we get. So that gives me 336.8990639 euro. So correct to two decimal places, that's 336. 6.9 euro. So basically the monthly repayment amount is 336.9 euro. So that's how much Jack pays back every month. So now we're going to look at B part 2 of the question and this is worth 10 marks. So now we're told that after three years Jack gets a bonus in work and decides to use the money to repay the remaining balance of the loan in order to save himself paying interest on the last year. So we have to find out now how much Jack will need to pay to clear the loan after the three years. So we know that Jack is paying back 336.9 euro every month. So if we just find the value of the loan at the start of the 12 months we should be able to find out how much Jack needs to pay. So basically or A in the formula now is equal to 336.9 or interest rate is still the same however now t is only equal to 12 it's only for the final year it's not for the total amount so basically what we're trying to work out here is how much money jack will have to put in to cover the debt of 336.9 euro that he will be paying every month for 12 months at an interest rate of 0.00604419 and we can use the same formula as before for this and that's the amortization formula so now we have the value for a i and t and we're trying to work out the value for p so now we get 336.9 is equal to P times by 0.00604419 times by 1 plus that which is going to be just 1.00604419 to the power of 12 over 1 plus that again so 1.00604419 to the power of 12 again minus 1 and then we're going to solve for P. So the first thing we're going to do now is we're going to evaluate the bit in the brackets there so let's do that using our calculator. So evaluating that we get 0.08664383933 and now I'm going to divide both sides by that to get my value for P. So on the right hand side I just get P and then on the left hand side we're going to use your calculator to work out what that is. So we can just do 336.9 divided by answer and we get 3888.33 correct to two decimal places and that's our value for P. So Jack would have to pay off 3888.33 euro to clear the loan after three years. So that's our answer for B part two which is the final part of the question and the end of the video. So thank you very much for watching and I hope I helped.